When most people hear the name Arnold Schwarzenegger, they don't think master marketer. But all along, Arnie had a method behind the muscles. And today, let's talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger's secret marketing principles, and then we'll talk a little bit about how you can apply them to your own life and your business. From the age of 11, Arnold had one goal, to become Mr. Universe, and then later he said, I'm gonna move to America, and I'm gonna leverage that title to become a movie star. And that's exactly what he did. Just nine years later, at 20 years old, the Austrian-born Arnold became the youngest person to win the bodybuilding title. He went on to win this title four more times, and then Mr. Olympia, the big one, seven times. Arnold Schwarzenegger! And his success as a bodybuilder proved invaluable in shaping him both physically and figuratively as a star. But he owes much of this success to his mentor, the father of bodybuilding, Joe Weider. He created magazines now known as Muscle and Fitness Flex, Men's Fitness and Shape, and Joe Weider became known as the scenes guru of the sport. And with his guidance, Arnold began to market himself as a star. But it's not good enough to just be talented, he said. You gotta sell yourself too. Arnold says in his autobiography, Total Recall, that no matter what you do in life, selling is part of it. And after winning Mr. Universe, Arnold used that title to promote his own gym by walking the streets of his small Austrian town in his underwear. Arnold's friend called up the local press, says, Schwarzenegger, the guy who won the shoe lifting contest? Well, now he's Mr. Universe and he's at Stasha's Square in his underwear. And the next day, he was all over the newspapers, getting free press. And this was just the beginning for him. Arnold knows a thing or two about legwork. And when he landed the blockbuster role, as the title character in the movie Conan the Barbarian, he knew that he had to put in the reps to bring the masses to his movies, just like weightlifting. Arnold recognized that very few of his acting peers liked to sell. The typical attitude was that they were above it, that creators create, they don't shill for money, they don't do that. But Arnold knew that if his goal was to make big bucks, to get attention, he needed publicity. And so he pushed to promote Conan worldwide. And he made the case that not only was it good for his bank account, but the public would get to see a good movie too. And with a European point of view, that provided a strong argument too. He said, the US only has 5% of the viewing audience in the world, so why are we neglecting the other 95%? The studio agreed to have Arnold promote Conan in five or six countries. And instead of waiting for royalties to roll in, Arnold took the reins and brought his films and his larger than life physique on tour. It's a big step for him and then later for the industry. And he continued this practice throughout his movie career. When Arnold finished a film, he said his job was only half done. He had to nurture every film in the marketplace. And in his words, he's like, I'm not gonna rely on some schmuck to do the marketing for me. His global marketing campaigns propelled him to international stardom. And then as technology advanced and modern ways of getting your message out had arrived, Arnold stayed at the top of his promotional game. Here's an example. On a 2015 episode of The Graham Norton Show, Arnold got all the guests together to shoot a viral social clip. It was co-branding at its core, where he was promoting them on his own channels while simultaneously making use of their unique audiences to grow his reach. We are on The Graham Norton Show, and I have some friends here. <laughs> oh no, quick, I'll be back. As de la vista, baby. Oh, there is no bathroom. <laughs> Who's your daddy now? And what does he do? I'm old, not obsolete. <laughs> and it is an example of something that Arnold is masterful at, cultivating an audience. Which brings us to principle two, build your tribe. It's marketing 101 to find your target audience and engage them. Arnie learned this from his mentor and the father of bodybuilding, Joe Weider. And he learned that you can create your own channel to connect with your audience, and in this case, he saw how Weider expertly used magazines. As a teenager, he created his own fitness magazine, Your Physique, which would later become Muscle and Fitness, the leading bodybuilding magazine. And these magazines uncovered an audience who hadn't been reached before, and they launched this trend of bodybuilding. Weider met Arnold at a bodybuilding competition in Europe and said, look, why don't you come to America with me? Here's the deal. I'll pay for your rent, I'll pay for your transport, and in exchange, you're gonna pose for my magazines. Arnold said yes, and then Weider ended up doing this for a couple different bodybuilders. 
which helped him create industry heroes and then further promote the sport of bodybuilding. It was like the original influencer marketing strategy. And at the time, Arnold was a muse, a student. And he learned from Weta, he watched him closely, watched him create his own books, watched him work on magazine projects to promote his own ventures too. Which brings us to principle number three, differentiate. The very things that agents, managers, and studio execs said that would be a total obstacle for Arnold, they ended up becoming an asset for his career. The director says, if we wouldn't have had his body, we would have had to build one. So all of a sudden, my body became an asset, not a liability. Well, I grew up in California and Arnold was governor when I was in middle school, so we all tried to do that Arnold accent. <clears throat> I'll be back. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> and at one point, Arnold took accent removal lessons, but then decided not to get rid of his accent entirely. Terminator, after we were finished filming Terminator, Jim Cameron said to the press, if Arnold wouldn't have had that accent and talked like a machine, I think the movie wouldn't have worked. When it comes to marketing, this is one of the things that I admire about Arnold. He recognizes the importance and the notoriety of those famous accented movie catchphrases that he does. He's always the one to be capitalizing on a marketable moment, so he participates in parodies of himself too. He actually revels in the media's use of the term governator. No, Larry. I've had a great career, as you know, as a bodybuilder, as an actor, and as a politician. Arnold is like many iconic greats in that he sees failure as an opportunity. But he's different because he has such an unyielding focus on his goal that he never has a backup plan. I hate plan B. People perform better in sports and everything else if you don't have a plan B. I'm telling you, I've never ever had a plan B. For another video about somebody who built an empire from nothing, click here to see my video about the founder of Visualize Value, Jack Butcher.